What's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you some of the basics of commanding in CTI. The first thing you're going to want to do, you've just started the game and it's decided that you're going to command. You're going to go up here, press your tilde key, take command from the HQ. Unlock it, and get in. Not as gunner, probably driver would be better for that, but you're going to get in and you're going to look at your map. So where are you? You're in a pretty decent spot, so let's go ahead and drive Let's drive towards northeast of Freeney, because this is a decent spot to set up a base at. So here we are at Freeney. This is a pretty good spot to set up your base. Go ahead and park your HQ and get out. Remember to keep this thing locked at all times. You don't want anybody besides you getting in there. You're going to go ahead and open up your build menu, and you're going to start placing down some structures. And I'm not talking about the structures that are your factories yet. I'm talking about factory defense. You don't want these things out in the open. So you're going to go down, find the tent hangar, and we're going to build a few of these. Now I'm, I'm just going to do this a couple of times. I'll do maybe four of these to show you the basics, but you're probably going to need more than these. Here you've got your four down. The next thing you're going to want to do, you're going to go down and you're going to find the roof shed. This right here, shed roof. And you're going to build these so that there's one over every top of the hangar. What this does is it protects the sides of your, your factory and it protects the top from being hit by mortars and bombs, things like that. The last step in protecting your factories themselves is you're going to go, you're going to find the land shed, and you want to turn it so that this concrete part is against the back. What this does is it it protects the back, obviously, but more importantly, you don't want anybody sneaking in here. And this, this really is going to save you some time based on building defenses. You're not going to have to build, um, you're not going to have to put MG defenses back here to stop people from getting in. You, they can only get in from the front, so you can just put two here, and it'll stop everybody from getting in from the front. So you've got your tent hangers up. First thing you're going to want to build is your military installation. Now this doesn't really need to go in a tent hanger because it's too tall to be protected anyway. So what I like to do is just set it off to the side. But you're going to want to put this basically where you want the middle of your base to be. So right there is probably a good spot for the middle of my base. Go up here and add your workers. You should probably just buy all 10 of them at this point. They're pretty cheap and they're very effective. What these guys do is they're going to build your factories and in the case of them getting destroyed, they can also attempt to repair them. Now until your workers complete your military installation, you're not actually going to be able to place down any factories. Alright, now that the military installation is built, what we can do is we can start placing down our factories now. The first thing I, well, the first thing most people should build is the, uh, let's, hold on, it's lagging out here a little bit. Alright, the first thing you want to build is your control center. What this does is it establishes your network and it allows you to do upgrades, which are very, very important. So while that builds, we'll go ahead and set up a few other things here. You're going to want to get your barracks built, and you're going to want to make sure that this blue arrow faces out in front, because what this is, is that's where the things are going to spawn at. So make sure where that arrow is is nice and clear. And then the last thing that I like to build is a light factory. Those are the first things I like to get done. Now don't go overboard and build all of these because they despawn if, you're, if your workers can't build them in time. So I'll catch up with you guys once these workers build it and we'll pick up where we left off. Alright, we're back and they've completed the control center. So you're going to want to run your upgrades. You're going to open your tablet, go to upgrades. The first thing that I like to upgrade is the light factory. So instead of waiting all this time to show you everything, basically what I do is I get light factory to level 2 which will unlock your respawn truck and your Ifrit HMG or Hunter HMG depending on what side you're on. After that, you upgrade barracks once, or you upgrade gear once, then you upgrade barrack once, and then you want your town occupation twice. What town occupation does is it guards the towns you capture. So if you meet Blue 4 early in the game and you don't have any town occupation at all, what's going to happen is they're going to be able to take your towns without any resistance. They can walk right up to the flag and take it from you. This will stop that from happening. Town Occupation 2 will mean infantry spawn near the flag, and then you'll get maybe an APC and some hunters. Hunters are Ifrits, I guess. 
The other thing it does, which is equally if not more important than that, is it increases your income. Now, I don't have an exact figure on how much it increases your income, but I'd like to say by the time you have Tanakh 3, it may be a little bit less than doubles it. So say you're earning a thousand minute, a thousand a minute once you had uh, no Tanakh. If you went all the way to Tanakh 3, you'd have somewhere around 1700 a minute, which is a significant increase. The next thing that I like to do is go back in the build menu here and set up some basic defenses. You're gonna to wanna to make sure auto manning is on. If that's off, your defenses are not gonna be manned, they're just gonna be empty static defenses. You don't want that. You're gonna find this MG defense. And remember that the blue arrow is where the, the soldier is going to sit. So it's gonna shoot the opposite way. And it has, I don't know if it has a 360 degree range or not, but it has close to it. You're gonna put them on the sides so that if anybody tries to come in here and get to the front of your factories, they're going to get shot. This will really protect your stuff. Now this is just basic, keep in mind. This isn't going to be a full base, but this will teach you the basics of how to build one. The next thing we're going to do that's very, very important late game, not so much early game, but late game this will be vital, is you're going to want to find these AA defenses. Now these are Titan missile launchers. And you're going to want to set about eight of these up. Two in each direction is what I like to go for. And this is going to give you 360 degree anti-air coverage. No helicopter or jet's going to come within your base without getting shot down. Which is a very good thing because you don't want anybody sneaking in here and setting down an FOB or putting in a respawn helicopter and just pounding your base over and over again. That'd be the end of you and it'd be a very stressful way to go out the rest of the game. So once that's down and the soldiers go ahead and Man all those, you'll be covered from the air. Now that that's done, we should think about getting this HQ locked in place. It's pretty vulnerable sitting out here and if you lose this, you need to pay $50,000 to repair it if you have a repair truck nearby, or if you don't, the game's over. Once you lose this, there's no more building. So unlock it. And remember to keep this locked. If you're not in it, keep this locked. You don't want anybody but yourself in there. Because like I said, this is a very valuable asset that you don't want to lose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive this over here in one of these hangars, and I'm going to seal off the front of it with some no walls. So we're going to tuck it back in here. Get it nice, nice and cozy up here, because if you're too far towards the front, it's not going to let you build, and that's just going to be a pain in the ass to have to sneak it in there afterwards. I just find that this way saves time. You're going to lock it, and you're going to run out, because you're not going to be able to get back out. The idea here is that no one gets in, nothing gets out. Go to your factory menu, and come down here to mill walls. Now you can use sheds for this, but I find mill walls are easier to knock down when it comes time to to build your second base. But you're just going to do a nice line across here. It's a little laggy right now, I'm not sure why, but a nice line so that nothing gets in. Now I've got auto align on, so these will line up here in a second, but for some reason the game's not very happy with what I'm doing. Alright, so whatever reason, for whatever reason, these walls aren't straightening out. In the server they will. I've got this loaded on a single player little mission file so that I can show you it. But the idea is to get this so that all these mill walls line all the way across the entrance so nothing gets in. Something like this. Alright, so that'll that'll have to work. That'll look a lot better in the server. My computer's lagging out I'm trying to load all these AI at once. The server does a much better job than my computer can. Alright, so you've got your HQ sealed off. The next thing you're gonna want to do after you've got all your upgrades ran that I listed earlier is you're gonna want to get a get a bearing on the situation. You're gonna want to figure out what you want to cap and start coordinating your team. So for this base, you're going to want to take Freeney, 
Nietzsche, and Athera quick. If you don't have all three of those towns, your base is weaker. What these red lines indicate is they indicate your base protection links. If you don't have all three of these towns, your base, I want to say, takes double the damage from things like satchel charges and mortars. But if you have the, uh, or the I've got that backwards. If you have all three towns, your base takes 200% less damage. Without it, it'll be much easier for enemies to come in and blow up your structures. And then generally, once you've got those, you've got a decent income started, you're going to want to split up your team. Provided you have enough players in your team, you'll probably want to send maybe two or three of them to Iphistonia, and then the rest to Athera, military air base. Generally what happens is the other team will spawn 15 kilometers away from you, and that almost always puts them on the other side of the map, but in this case they could be down here near Kavala. But assuming you spawned in the, in the center west end near Core or something, they'd likely have spawned near Silicano or Molos or Kalachori or something like that. Almost always it's going to be an east versus west battle. And that leaves Telos to be the center fighting point. So generally if you can get to Telos first and fortify it, you'll be set for the rest of the game. So send your two or three players down to Iphistonia to get your, your economy going with all these towns over here and send the rest to take military, airbase, Telos, Calithia, Anthrakia, and then just until the other team comes and makes contact with you, you're going to want to just try to build up your income as much as possible.